we are recording the session, so if you need access to it later on, or if someone else didn't, wasn't able to join, they can grab the recording. All right, so um, as Jack mentioned, we're going to take a look at um, Dynamic Serum Online and kind of how it integrates with Office 365. So please ask questions along the way, and we'll just kind of go through a few slides, but then we'll spend a lot of time in just kind of demoing so you can kind of see the product in action, um, kind of see, get a feel for CRM, and then how we um, integrate and what we integrate with on the Office 365 side. Um, but before we kind of really get into the, the, the granular details of CRM and kind of how where we integrate and, and what we integrate with, you know, it's kind of kind of keep in mind kind of three you know main benefits you know of adding CRM together with Office 365 is you know CRM is more of a business application. It's meant to track track your your contacts, your leads, opportunities, and your interactions with those um, with those uh, entities. And so, you know, adding in Office 365 can really um, increase the cus customer's, you know, business productivity. You know, as we combine CRM, you know, we're adding adding CRM into familiar applications that customers are already using, um, the services that they already are familiar with. So one of the uh, biggest reasons, you know, for implementation failures is normally user adoption. So when you can pull CRM into, you know, familiar applications like Office 365, um, it definitely helps with learning the learning curve and just you know end user adoption overall. Um, when uh, you have customers you know really want to maximize efficiency, you know they really want to collaborate and communicate with each other. You know having CRM as the the business solution and then adding in you know uh, Exchange Online or SharePoint Online that can you know store documents, help with the sending and and uh, tracking of email. Um, that really helps helps make them more efficient um, and so forth. And then the other thing is kind of reducing um, the costs. So, you know, with an on-premise environment, you, you know, the additional server licenses, um, additional SQL licenses may be needed, you know, for SharePoint and CRM. And so, you know, going into into Office 365 and the online service, you know, a lot of that overhead and managing the servers, you know, all that reduces is re, uh, reduced in cost and not having to do do those um, types types of actions you know don't have to upgrade the servers or up, upgrade the software with on within the um, deployment so just having that being managed for you with a you know 99.9 percent you know guarantee um, of, of uptime is definitely a, a key benefit for um, customers and reducing costs um, the other last thing too, just kind of mentioned on this slide, is you know just a benefit to the customers. You know, as they spend time training, you know, as in, you bring in new software, obviously there's some end user training, but if they're already familiar with the tools like Outlook, um, like um, SharePoint, it makes it a lot easier just to kind of train them on the CRM functionality and how the CRM functionality works within those applications, and then they can be on their way, you know, uh, utilizing um, the system. All right, so a little bit more kind of granular details around CRM. So kind of what is it? What do we include within within the um, licenses? Um, with Dynamic CRM, we have three main um, core modules. We have a sales module that helps kind of with the um, account contact tracking, um, leads and opportunities, kind of more than the normal sales process. We also do include um, quotes, orders, and invoices. So there is that that um, capability as well within Dynamic CRM. Um, a lot of times when you get into larger organizations, they usually have like an ERP system like a Dynamics AX or a GP or NAV that um, it does their you know kind of their order processing and their order management for them. Um, and we do integrate with those products um, as well, even with CRM Online. Um, but just to keep in mind that CRM does have some ordering and invoicing capabilities too if you wanted to you know, just use it on the CRM side. Um, we do have a marketing module. So as you're building up those contact databases, your, your lead pipeline, and you want to do um, direct mails or um, you know, monthly mailings to your, your customers or your leads, um, you can create dynamic marketing lists that can be reused as you, as you try to target um, your customer base, um, whether, like I said, whether it's monthly emails or um, cold calls if you want to have customers um, be cold call or you have leads that you want to do cold calling on, you could have the system create um, a bunch of calls that are t assigned to certain people and those folks could then go through those calls and make the cold calls out to the leads and you know find interest and qualify the leads and so forth. So so the marketing and the sales you know play play really well together as you're building up that contact database. 
And then we also have a customer service side. So if you have customers that are in need of, of normal like kind of support incidents and you know, tracking their cases, um, we do offer that, as well as uh, service scheduling. So if you have any customers in need of, of actually scheduling a service, so you'll know, find the least busy person or the most busy person, um, there's different. There's a, basically a scheduling engine within Dynamics CRM that can help with the, those capabilities. So those are kind of the, you know, the three main areas out of the box that you'll get. And we'll take a look at some of those in, in the demo as well. But the main kind of key concept of CRM is just being able to extend it because everyone has certain things they want to track, certain um, items they want to make sure that that are followed up on. And so being able to either add new fields, add new entities, like, um, like maybe you want to add a, a customer entity to track a certain type of customer that's maybe different from your normal account. You could go ahead and do that um, within CRM without really even being a developer. I can, I'll show some of the quick, easy ways you can customize CRM um, without having to be, to be a developer. And so that really makes CRM a powerful um, application there, just being able to extend it um, as you go forward. Within, uh, we do have two deployment models, and we're just today we're focused on the cloud with, with uh, Office 365, but we do have an on-premise um, option. So for those that want to start in the cloud and maybe migrate to on-premise later on down the road, or those that are on-premise and maybe want to migrate to the cloud, there is options to go um, between, between both um, deployment models. And then within CRM, CRM being a relation, relational database, um, you, know, you can set up your own relationships to your custom entities you create, or even in even new relationships in between rec or records that are already in the system, and you can you know, interact with those records, um, track the interactions with with the customer, uh, emails that are going out, um, phone calls that are made are all tracked within the the uh, database. Um, we do have also a work, uh, workflow, so kind of like SharePoint has work, a workflow engine. Um, CRM also um, uses the workflow, Windows Workflow Foundation, and so you can create workflows right within CRM and have those you know, automate a lot of your business processes. So if a customer is doing things over and over again that necessarily could be autom automated, you know, maybe it's sending out an email when a case is created or when a, a lead a lead is qualified to an opportunity, it sends an email over to the person it's assigned to or notifies their manager if they haven't followed up on it. You know, there's many different scenarios you can think of when you have workflow um, tied in with, with your CRM system. And then, uh, you know, kind of on the slide there, it calls out, you know, XRM framework. And that's just, you know, a term we use to refer to CRM as, you know, being, being extensible and being, you know, being able to, you know, not just be a customer, you know, a customer relationship management. It can be, um, you know, a properties management system or a client system or, you know, whatever you want to track, you know, you can kind of turn it and, you know, customize it to be that type of a system. And then whether you're using Microsoft Outlook um, or you're using a, the browser version or or mobile devices, you can access CRM through through either of those. So whether you're using Windows tablets, iPad devices, you know iPhones, Windows phones, Android phones, you know all those are accessible. We have apps that that are um, available for those um, devices. In the browser, we do support cross-browser. So if you're using Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or um, Internet Explorer, we support all four of those. And then I will do a demo um, with the Outlook client as well. So you'll see CRM, how it's tied and integrated into Outlook. All right, so let me switch over to my window here. So basically right now I'm just using, I'm just logged into the web version of Dynamics CRM. And for those that have, have seen, you know, the CRM option out in Office 365, if you have a current 365 um, subscription, you can add CRM right into that. Um, is there any questions here? Okay. Um, so you can add Office 365, or sorry, CRM right into your Office 365 subscription. So any users you currently have in Office 365, um, whether you be federated or just you know using your on Microsoft.com login. Um, those users automatically get added into CRM, and then you can choose which um, users you want to give a license to. So just like you would add a license into for a SharePoint user or an Exchange uh -huh. online user, you can uh, give access to C CRM the same way. You just give them your CRM license, and then they'd be able to log in to CRM. So 
with the first thing you're going to see as I'm in CRM here is the dashboard capabilities. So these are real-time dashboards. Um, this is kind of showing me my sales pipeline, some cases, my leads leads by rating, and you have full full customization access to um, create any type of dashboards you want. So as long as the data is in the CRM database, you can create charts on it, and you can display those charts in a dashboard. So for example, just to kind of show how it kind of real time it is, as I look at my sales pipeline um, chart here, I can see I have a number of them that are blank. If somebody hasn't been updating their data, if I wanted to maybe find out who the, who they are, I mean, I could go to the opportunities area and kind of do some querying that way. But if I'm more of a visual person, I can kind of click right into this air chart area. I could go down, maybe just find the owner field, and let's just repivot that chart to be more of a, a bar chart. And I can quickly see that it looks like you know these three users in the system need to get some need to get to do some work and update their opportunities. Um, I can jump out of this dashboard if I actually want to see the real data. I can just click that little um, option up there, and that'll pop up me pop up the um, opportunities. And I'm still seeing that same chart that I just kind of filtered down to. And if I wanted to, I could click on Gail's box here. I could quickly see, oh, here's Gail's um, opportunities that she needs to update. And same thing, I can go to Jose's or I can go to mine, and I can quickly see um, the data. So it really allows you to filter, not only just see dashboards, you know, the pretty dashboards and the KPIs, but it allows you to you know, utilize them as ways to filter down the data and get access to certain records that you want. Um, if I, if I uh, take off the filter here and just return back all opportunities, I can refresh the chart. And now I have basically have my sales pipeline again, and I can you know kind of click into here to kind of filter down the data to see the data that matches up with the section that I'm clicking on. So, you know, being able to uh, visualize the data is definitely a key aspect of of CRM. And being able to create charts, you don't need to be uh, a .NET developer to create these charts. We basically offer you um, a nice little UI where even an end user, if they if you give them permissions to create user charts, they could come in here, click the little plus icon, and what that's going to do is take them to this little designer. I can also say test chart. And all they really need to do is pick the fields that they want to report on. So maybe I'm just going to do a count on the number of, of fields and we'll uh, filter them by rating. So if I save that, right now I just have three, three um, records right here, so it doesn't show me too much, but let's exit out of here and let's undo our filter. And just like that, I've created a chart that just shows me you know, my, my uh, opportunities by rating. Looks like I have you know, 62 warm and nine hot. So you see, it's basically making it easier. You don't need to be a developer to kind of customize some of the uh, components in CRM. Obviously, being a developer, you can take advantage of even more things like our um, OAuth connections, our web services, um, plug-in capabilities to extend the system even further. But uh, that's you know, depending on the customer knowledge or you know where you want to go with it. You have different capabilities depending on the type of, of user or implementer you are. So let me go ahead and close this one. Let me go back to CRM here. So still within the dashboard here, I can actually go back to the chart that I started with and kind of view that information. Um, but anytime I come to the dashboards, they are real time showing the data that's in the system. So let me jump over to our account. So as you see at the top here, we kind of have this top-down navigation. So as I hover over um, sales, I can get to my sales areas. If I hover over dynamic CRM, I can get to the different areas that we kind of already talked about. We talked about sales, service, and marketing. And so I can get to each of those areas. Um, but right now, we'll just you know stick with sales. Um, within sales, we can go ahead and go over to accounts. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull up this AdventureWorks account. And so within the account, the, basically the account, think of the account as the customer. And there's contacts that work at the customer, or work for the for that um, account. And so anything that you see, um, basically any activities under the account would show up um, within here. Um, anything that you've done with any of the contacts would also kind of roll up into this account. But the main thing I wanted to show in here is our integration with SharePoint. As I click on the Documents tab at the top, I kind of hover down and I click on Documents. This is going to show me um, any documents that I've stored with this with this account. And so as that loads up SharePoint here, 
Um, you can see it basically it just brings in, it's kind of like an iframe view, but it's really a, a CRM look and feel to it. Um, however, if I, if I select on one of the um, records here, I get SharePoint action. So check out, check in, you know, these are normally things you would find in SharePoint. And so I can go ahead and I can upload um, documents. I can, uh, you know, create new documents from here. Let's click on click add. If you notice when I click add, it's actually opening up the SharePoint, um, you know, basically add file window. Um, I'll just pull that in. Actually, I already had that one, sorry. Let's grab. Okay, I'll put that in there. And so I uploaded that. Um, and basically, if I open up SharePoint, I can click on the link here, we can see that I should have two files in there now, and the one that was just added. Um, so basically, it's, um, it's creating a document storage location for us for each account that we want to store um, information for. Um, if I add files from this side, if I go, oh, got a new folder, I go add. Same thing, you know, same window kind of pops up. Let's go ahead and let's put that in here. Click OK. Now if I go back over to CRM and just refresh this view here, I should have three files over here now. So it's just kind of tying in SharePoint with, with a CRM in regards to document management. Now if I was on a new account, let's just go to, I think let's, this one looks like it's a new one that was created. And I go to the Documents tab. What it's going to do is it's going to go check and see, hey, is there a document location for this customer? If it is, it'll open it up for me. If there isn't, it'll actually say, hey, do you want to create one? I can go ahead and say, OK. And that's going to provision a doc, uh, basically a document folder for me to start storing information um, about this account. And now anyone that has access to SharePoint, um, as long as you give them permissions to those folders, um, you, they can access these documents. They don't necessarily have to be a CRM user in order to um, um, in order to take advantage of, of collaborating. So, okay, kind of a, one question we got here is kind of sharing the integration integration how to guide. So yeah, we definitely can can post that. Basically, what all it is is we have a solution file that you upload into SharePoint, and then there's some some uh, a wizard you run through on the CRM side that will configure that and point it to the to the SharePoint site. So yeah, we can definitely share that after. All right, so let me jump over to our leads. So that was just a little bit about accounts. I'm gonna jump over to leads here. In our leads area, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up. Let's see, one other question here, can you tie in SharePoint workflow solution to CRM? Um, there, are solution, there are ways to do that. Um, within CRM, you can create kind of custom workflow activities or plugins that can call out to other um, systems like SharePoint. Um, and I think probably with SharePoint, you may be able to do vice versa if you wanted to call out from SharePoint. So there are ways to do it. It does take, you know, obviously some uh, development skills to do that or you know, coding. Um, not, not out of the box, but it is, it is possible. Let me open up my lead here. One thing you'll see too is with uh, with uh, Dynamic CRM here in 2013, we added um, basically this process flow um, at the top here. And I'm not sure why it's not expand. Oh. There we go. Okay, it wasn't expanded. Um, basically, a process flow. So let's think. Think you have a customer that they do a certain process in order to qualify a lead, or they have a certain process of how they take support cases. Well, you could build that process into into Dynamic CRM, where you could, you know, at the top here, here, here are the key things we need to find out about this this lead in order before we qualify them to be an opportunity or a contact. And so you can kind of define your process. Um, and as you define that process, you know, it, it basically helps guide an end user or a salesperson through that process. So it kind of even helps with end user training where, you know, hey, there's a lot of information on this form, but all you need to know is if you fill these six fields in, you know, that, then, you know, the record can be qualified. And so you can kind of develop that process or kind of fine tune that your sales process into CRM if, if you would like. Um, if you don't, if you don't have really have a sales process and you don't want to build one into here, you can definitely um, disable and remove this as well, and just have the normal form here. 
So what I'm going to do here is I have an act, or basically a lead, and as I am looking at the lead here, I can click on a click in estimated budget. Let's just say fifty thousand. Purchase process is a committee, and you can see these are just normal fields that could be on the form down here, but we're trying to call them out at, as for the salesperson to say, hey, these are some of the things that we need to capture. Um, I can go ahead and make them required if I wanted to. So if I wanted to edit that sales process, me as a kind of a system customizer, I could come in here and say um, edit process, and it'd bring me to the process designer where I could add additional fields, additional steps, um, or I could even just make things required. You know, maybe the budget amount and purchase time frame I want required. Um, if I go over to on the opportunity side, I could you know modify some stuff here as well. I could click save. And as I save it, I'll just go and close. I'm going to come back out here. And let me just refresh the screen here. Press F5 here. So it takes my changes and refreshes the screen. And so now when it comes back, I should have some red marks. Yes, now I have a little red, red asterisk by estimated budget and by purchase time frame. So if I didn't fill these in, um, if they were blank, I couldn't basically proceed to the next step until this was done. And so I can say, I'll just fill something in there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit qualify. And you'll notice right now as I'm on a lead record, if I click qualify, uh, I'll just go past the duplicate warnings. I've qualified this a few times. Notice when we come back in here, you're going to see an opportunity. We're basically moved to an opportunity record. We're still in the same process flow. It just helps the user say, hey, you went from qualify to develop. Well, now you're in an opportunity, and we, we now created an account for you in the system. We've created um, a contact for you, this Maria Campbell over here, and we've tied this opportunity back to the account. So it basically, it's the system's just kind of helping the user guide them through, through the process um, of kind of the quali qualifying the lead. So one other way we can integrate with kind of the office components is let's just say I have a list of, a list of opportunities here. So I'm just going to go back out to my opportunities. Now that I've qualified some opportunities, I have a bunch of opportunities here. I could use the, the dashboards and the charting to help me you know, view my sales pipeline. So if I pull this, this over, I can see here's my top customer charts. And these are some just ones that come out of the box. I could see my sales pipeline again. But maybe you're more familiar with Excel and you want to do some more Excel um, charting and reporting. Well, what you can do is you can select a bunch of records. And under the command bar here, I can come over and go to Export to Excel. And I can export it as a static worksheet, where it's just kind of a one-time export. You get um, whatever is on, on the form here you have selected. Um, but the more of the powerful um, connection is a dynamic worksheet or dynamic pivot table if you want to jump right to a pivot table. So I'll just do dynamic worksheet. The next screen that comes up that says, you know, what columns do you want to export? So by default, it takes all the columns that were on that view up here that we just that we started from. But I could go in and I could actually add more columns here. I could come in, maybe I want to bring in uh, actual revenue, budget. I can pull those in as well. So now they're part of the list. I can go ahead and click on export. And I'll just hit open here. And this should open it up right in Excel. And then you just get some Excel warnings here. So enable the editing and then enable content. And then you'll see, since we did a dynamic um, a dynamic export, it wants us to refresh the data. So if I go to the Data tab, you'll notice there's a Refresh from CRM option. And this is because I have the Outlook add-in installed. It also adds a plugin into Excel. And I'll be showing the Outlook here in a little bit. But um, So if I click Refresh from CRM, it's going to go out to CRM and pull back any opportunity records um, that meet that criteria for you know, the My Open opportunities. So that pulls back. Let's say we got uh, 23 records. I'm just going to go over to CRM. Let's just go ahead and add a new record here real quick. And I'll just pick a customer real quick. I'll click Save. I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet. And I'll just hit Refresh from CRM. And we should have 24. For, well, beyond 25 with this, with the headers. So what you can do with this is you could have an Excel file, build out some pivot charts, um, reporting, 
however you want it want it to look and then you could just save it you could refresh from crm and any pull in any new data and update the pivot table so you don't have to keep redoing the same um, the same uh, reporting every time or the same pivot pivot tables Let's see, one question here, updating, editing opportunities are available via mobile applications. Um, yes, so I actually will show that. I'll launch my mobile application here um, towards the end, and I'll kind of show there. We have the mobile applications for Windows and iPad um, for, the, for the tablets. Android we don't have yet, but that will be coming. And then we do have phone apps for Android, iPhone, and Windows phones. Let's see. Assume edit. I'm assume that editing the processes workflows are browser based only. Um, yes. So as you're as you're editing workflows in CRM or creating workflows or even the, the business processes, those are web based only as for editing. But the tablet apps do consume the the business process, and I can kind of even show you that too. And some of the work the workflow functionality. So let me go ahead and I'm just going to actually one thing before I go any further. Let's just go ahead and just like with normal um, uh, Excel functionality, we can create a pivot table off of this. I could pull in, maybe I just want to do a count or a count of my account by rating. Uh, I could throw in maybe probability. And you can, see, you can start building out your pivot tables like you normally would. Um, but kind of the, the nice thing here is I could let's save this, save it to my desktop. Save it as an Excel workbook. Um, demo. So I'm going to save that to my desktop, but I'm going to go back into CRM. And you know, having it on my desktop is great for me, but it doesn't help anyone else that may want to use that that pivot the, that pivot table we just created. So what I can do is under um, the sales menu or service or marketing, we have a re have a reports area. If I go into the reports area, I'm going to have a new option at the top here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new. And under here, I can actually start. We, we use SQL reporting services as our reporting um, tool. So if you want to create you know, custom reports, you can definitely do that through Visual Studio and you know, upload, upload those RDL files into CRM. Um, however, we do have kind of a mini little report wizard you can run through to create your own reports. They're pretty pretty basic, but at least you know it gives you the, the functionality to create some report right right out of the box. But in the scenario that we had is we have an Excel file, so I have an existing file. I can click Browse, and I can go to my desktop, find that demo, and I can actually upload this into CRM. Let's give it a different name here. Hit Save and Close. And so now this will be available. This demo Excel report is available in CRM, and anyone that has access to this can open this up. And now the key thing is, if they don't have permissions to some of the data, um, CRM knows that or can actually applies the permissions to it. So we'll only show them the data that they have permissions to see uh, while in your Excel report. So that's another another kind of another feature you can take advantage of is um, storing the Excel reports um, up in here along with reporting services reports. All right, let me jump over to Outlook here for a second. I'm gonna pull in my let me close this. Just gotta pull over my email here. Okay, let me pull this over. All right, so here I'm just in in Outlook. To see, so quick question here: so is the Excel dynamic in nature? Um, it is if you export it um, out as a dynamic sheet. There is a static option that you can select. So you have to kind of pick that. We kind of build the query string that we would go back to the back to the data source to get the data. So that's why it has to be built kind of out of out of C or exported out of CRM. I mean, you probably could grab the the connection within Excel and try to you know create a new one from scratch. But uh, for the most part, exporting it out of out of CRM will give you the right connection string, the right entities you're trying to pull, and things like that. Let's see, can you also host Excel chart pivot tables on SharePoint? So you don't have to. Um, if you're going to host the Excel pivot tables on SharePoint. 
um, they would, I guess they would still need a CRM license in order to refresh the data or be able to kind of view the data. And technically if they're viewing CRM data, they would still need a CRM license, but they could use a, like a, a basic license if it's just more of a read only copy. They don't need to do any editing or actual, actual um, creating of records in CRM. They could get by with a, a, a cheaper license, with the, which would be the basic. Um, so there would still be some license need, license need there for um, internal users that would still be accessing CRM data. Um, and one thing I guess I didn't mention too, when we talked a little bit about the SharePoint. So we we showed the SharePoint document management functionality, which is kind of an out-of-box component that you can configure. Um, there are deeper things you can do. So like, like I mentioned, we have the OAuth connections in the CRM. We have web services that you can call from SharePoint. So we do have you know some third-party solutions out there, or partners that have developed um, things that would pull data out of CRM and display them like in a list web part or a, a grid within SharePoint. Or you could go the other way around and you could create an iframe in CRM and display SharePoint data within within CRM in an iframe. So instead of just having document management functionality, you can go further than than what we offer out of the box, but it just does it does take some of that the um, dev work to do that. So with the, with the Outlook client here, um, you'll notice. I mean, everything looks very similar to Outlook. I don't. You don't really see too much CRM unless you look at the ribbon up here. Um, you see the CRM add-in at the top, and what this add-in allows us to do is for new emails that come in. You maybe you want to quickly track an email. You want to get that email into CRM. Maybe it's a, a new lead or it's a case you want to get over to the service team. Um, it allows you to do those things a, a lot quicker than having to you know, open up CRM, you know, go create a new record, and, and so forth. So just kind of an example here, I have an email that came in. It says they're interested in, in a new product that we're offering. I can go ahead and hit track on that email. And what that's going to do is you'll see a little pane pop up at the bottom here and basically showing me that this record is now tracked and it's tracked with this customer or this uh, this contact record. And we actually create auto create that contact record for you um, if you have that setting turned on. If you don't want it to auto create a contact for you, you can turn that off. But uh, we track that that information. So now if I actually were to go and actually open up that, that contact record, I'll cl click on that and that'll actually pull go out to CRM and actually pull up the contact form. And I should see under activities now this basically email I just tracked. So the email, the customer was created, the email was was tracked to this so I can kind of see all the history that we have with them. Um, I'll go ahead and close that for now. Um, so that's great. You know, I can see the little icon here that shows us this, this email is tracked. But you can take that a step further too and say, you know, maybe we need to get this over to our sales team. Well, from the ribbon again up here, I can click on the convert to option. And I can convert this right to an opportunity, a lead, or a case. So in this in this example, let's just do opportunity. That's going to go ahead and it's going to give me a little dialog here. It's going to tie this opportunity to the back to this customer. Um, if it was it came from a campaign, I could relate a campaign back to it. But I'll just go ahead and keep the defaults for now. And that's just going to bring me right into an opportunity record that we kind of already looked at, um, or at least the form anyway. Um, but you see now we have a, an opportunity for this this contact um, and you know just some base information. I could go ahead and fill in more information about this. Or the, the powerful thing with CRM is maybe I have a workflow set up behind the scenes that would say when a new opportunity is created, um, if it's a certain type or a certain territory, assign it to you know the West sales team. Um, you could have that set up so then it could quickly go over to that team. Maybe it sends them an email um, once it's created. And so all that can be done um, through through here, but it all really originated from Outlook. You know, just a normal email that came in. I tracked it and then I converted it. And you notice too is after I converted it to that opportunity, the regarding is now this opportunity record. So at any time, if I still have this email in my um, inbox, I could click on here to open up that opportunity record, um, and, or I could just click the view in CRM from the ribbon as well. So we're pretty tightly integrated with, with um, tracking incoming email. For outgoing email, let me show you a couple examples here, is we integrate with the address book. So if I go ahead and click on the two option here, I drop down this here, you can see some CRM address books. And so basically this is pulling accounts, contacts, leads, users, all from within CRM. 
So if I click on my accounts, here I find that AdventureWorks company, and I could you know, send them an email. I could make sure I track it in CRM, so it creates a copy in CRM, so I have the history um, tied to this account. Um, I could pull in templates that might be from um, CRM. So if I create a bunch of templates in CRM, and I kind of, so there's some common emails I send out um, e each week, I could have a template for them. I could pull in that template, and that will basically just populate the email for me. And this one is just an out of the box kind of, you know, we haven't heard from you type template. But notice it pulls in customer information. So since I'm sending it to this AdventureWorks account, it can you know, default in some dynamic values um, there. And then it took my name from within CRM as well and put, put me there. So that's one example kind of for send, sending email. I could also do sales literature. So if you have, I don't know, I'm not sure if I have any in this, this system. If I, were, if I would have had sales literature, I would have had an attachment here. And I could have actually clicked on add, and that would have basically put an attachment in here. I think it was the other system I actually had attachments in there. But but you could quickly attach a sales literature item into the email, and then you could send it out. So I go ahead and hit send. And of course, since it's a fake email, it'll, it'll fail on me later on. But, uh, but you'll notice if I go to my um, sent items, this email is sent out, and it's tracked in CRM. And I can be able to see that information within the actual CRM application. Hey, Corey, we had another question here. Oh, uh, sure. Can you, con can you convert in bulk? For example, some of my customers get three to four emails a minute to generic email addresses, and it seems cumbersome. Yeah, you, you can um, in a way. So like, let's just say I'm just going to untrack this one just so I have two here for an example. If I grab both of these and click track, um, it'll basically say, you know, tracking two emails in CRM, it'll do that. Um, the only thing it really won't do or is if you want to convert them to, say, an opportunity or something, you can't do multiple conversions. That's kind of more of a one, one email at a time. But yeah, for tracking, um, if this account is already, or sorry, this contact is already in CRM, um, or you're having CRM create the contacts, those would get created and linked up for you with, without any other um, you know, options up here. So that would be all done for you. And then kind of on the same lines of tracking is if I went over to our contacts, I could do the same thing over here where I could grab a set of contacts. I could click on track and that's going to send them up into CRM as well. You notice I have a CRM icon by those contacts now. And we can take that one step further and we can go over to tasks and we can see, uh, I see all of my tasks right now are tied to things in CRM. So if I created a new task, I have the option to click on track as here as well. Um, I can even tie it to a certain record. And maybe there's an opportunity that, that this can be tied to. I can hit save and close. And now I have this test um, task tracked in CRM with that account. So, you know, it's really we're taking, you know, CRM and really integrating it into Outlook. So, you know, as a Outlook user, I don't even really have to leave Outlook to do CRM functionality. The other Thing you'll notice too is you're, you may be asking, well, how do, how would I get access to see the dashboards and you know all their data within the Outlook client? Well, we we add in a little um, CRM area where you can click on, and here you get access to all the CRM information. So if I wanted to go look at those same dashboards we looked at at the beginning of the demo, I could find the My Work area, go to Dashboards, and this will pull up those same dashboards we were just looking at um, within with, uh, within the web client. I can now access them in Outlook. So again, I don't have to use the web client. I could actually just do everything I wanted to within Outlook. Um, if I go over to let's see, let me go over, go over to opportunities here. So here again, I can see all my opportunities that I that I was seeing in the web client. A couple additional things you get with um, CRM, or sorry, with using Outlook, is I can right-click on these, and maybe I want to create a follow-up activity to follow up with them, you know, next week. If I go ahead and do that, look at I, I get a, a to-do item in Outlook that basically says to follow up with them next week, and it looks like a normal task record, but actually, if I actually click on it, it actually takes me to that record in CRM. I'm actually pulling up that opportunity, and it, and the reason we're able to do this is because as the CRM data comes down into Outlook, we actually create it as a mappy object, so it, it treats it just like an email um, would be treated in, in Outlook, and so we're able to do things like that. Um, we can even ap apply conditional formatting, so if I wanted to say any cold 
cold opportunities, I want to show up in blue, you know, kind of those types of formatting options, I can do that just by going over to the view area. I can click on view settings and I can go to conditional formatting. Click on add, I'll say cold, cold opti. And if they are cold, we want them to be blue. We'll bold them and we'll make them bigger just to show show them. And we got to add the condition that we want. So for the condition we're going to do, we'll choose a field. And if we go down to user to find fields, this pulls in, oops, sorry, pulls in all the CRM fields for opportunity since that's the entity we're on. I'll grab rating, I'll say contains cold. I'll add that condition. And now if I go back out, notice that all my cold, which I guess I may only have one, um, stand out a lot more and now I know, hey, I really need to get working on this on this uh, opportunity here. And so the Alibi client gives you some of that, those little extra um, functionality um, improvements over the web client because we can do things like this. All right. So that's kind of just a quick overview of the Outlook client. Obviously, there's you know there's quite a bit of functionality in there. I mean, everything you can do in the web client, you can do within Outlook. But then you get the ability to track and you know some of those additional things that I just showed you. The other th couple things I wanted to show as far as integrations go. Let me go back to the web client for a second. If I go to contacts, you'll notice once this view loads. I have my presence uh, icons. So if I hover over myself here, I can, you know, I can see my link status. I can, you know, I am with me. I can, you know, give my, give this contact a phone call, send them an email, just normal link functionality. And just because we're, you know, integrated with link and we're, you know, I have a link client on my computer, I'm able to get the link presence indicators. Um, now, if I wanted to, let's see, let me go, let me grab an account here as a fake phone number so I don't call somebody. Let me go into this adventure works here. Um, you'll notice that we'll have phone numbers that you can click on. So like, for example, I can click on this business phone here. What it's going to do is um, we have two options and depending on how you set this up, you could have Skype be your default or you could have link be your default. And so right now I just have set up a link to be my default. So if I click on a phone number, it'll try to launch link in a, in um, a my link client. And then I just, all they have to do is click this um, button here to call out and I can just do normal phone calls through link. So that's kind of our, it's kind of a couple areas we integrate with on the link side. Uh, like I said, oh, one key thing too is since I clicked on the phone number, notice this phone call activity automatically started for me because CRM thinks that, oh, hey, since you're making a phone call, you probably want to log your notes for the phone call. So I can, so I can just put some notes in there. Um, maybe I left a voicemail. I could click that as, a, as an option and I click OK. And notice, depending on what type of activity is, you'll get different icons. Like since I chose left voicemail, I get kind of a message with a phone on top. You know, this is an outgoing email with an attachment. Um, and so forth. So you kind of can see kind of quickly what what uh, um, types of activities you've done with this account. And then not really a part of Office 365, but we do have big, big map integrations within our form. So as long as you have an address within your accounts or contacts or, op or uh, leads, um, you, can, you can actually pull in um, the big map integration and actually you know, zoom in, zoom out um, of the big map view here. All right, and let me let's go out to the portal here real quick. Obviously, you guys are real probably real familiar with this view, but when you add CRM into your subscription, so this comes up here. Not sure why it didn't sign me in automatically, but or maybe we'll get to the portal. All okay, right, so there we go. So once you add CRM into here, like I, like I mentioned before, the users you add into here are going to be the same users you, you could have give access to CRM. So if I went in and like opened up Ben's record here, um, see how I have a CRM or option to add a CRM license to Ben. So I can go ahead and do that. And now Ben has a, would have access to log into CRM. I still do need to give him a role within the CRM 
um, client or basically within CRM because we do have certain permissions and kind of like SharePoint where you know you have different levels of security. Um, so there is a security role in CRM you'll need to give um, Ben here before he can fully access CRM, but at least this will give him the license to be able to, lo to log into CRM. If I go back to the dashboard, if you, if you again, if you have CRM in your portal, um, if you go to service health, you can see the health of, this, of the CRM online service, um, any issues just like you would any other online product um, that's out there. And uh, there is a, some, a few links to some dynamic CRM information too once you have, once you have the, the CRM component in there. Um, if you're interested in testing it out, we do have a 30-day trial. <clears throat> so if you wanted to add in CRM to an existing you know, trial that you already have, um, or you wanted to set up a, a brand new CRM one, you can do that. But if you go to the purchase services, CRM will show up um, as an option within purchase services uh, kind of towards the bottom, or just in this one, it's towards the, towards the bottom. So I could, could add, add a, on a CRM online um, trial. But since I already have it, like I said it's not showing me the trial. But see, that's where you would actually add that in at. Um, so let me go back to my slides here for a second, because there's a few things I'll kind of cover on what you get with a subscription. So with the service itself, you get, you get five gigabytes of data storage um, to start with. Now, depending on how many users or how many professional users uh, a customer has, and we'll talk about the licensing types here in the next slide, but depending on, if, say, if they have 20 um, professional users, they would get an additional 2.5 gigabytes for those 20 users. So you'd have a total of you know, 7.5 gigabytes of storage. If I had 80 professional users, I would get an additional 10 gigabytes of storage on top of my five. Um, there are some limitations around the number of workflows and number of entities you can create, but they're pretty high. I don't think I've seen too many people come close to, to um, hitting those limits, but just to note that they are there. Um, so basically 200 individual workflows and then 300 custom entities within the system. Um, one thing I actually I didn't call out when we were in the Outlook client is the Outlook client allows you to take data offline. So you have, you have offline access with, with your Outlook client. So if I wanted to sync down all my accounts and all my contacts, I could do that um, through the Outlook client. And then I'll, I'll bring up the mobile apps here in a second and show you a quick show that. Um, Online service benefits are very similar, if not the exact same, as, as Office 365 as far as SLA um, uptime, you know, the rapid deployment hosted by Microsoft, and then you know, re basically real-time location independent access. So it doesn't matter where you access it from, you'll be able to, as long as you have an internet connection, you can log into CRM, um, the CRM application. As far as uh, licensing, so we have three types of licenses. Um, professional is kind of the most common because that gives you access to everything within within the system, um, sales, service, and marketing. We don't ever really split those out. Um, professional just gives you full read, write, create, delete access to everything in the system. Um, a basic license um, is a little bit cheaper. It's kind of meant for those users that maybe just need read access to the data, um, but they, they do have permissions to create accounts, contacts, tasks, and notes, so, but everything else is pretty much read-only. Uh, le leads as well, I think it's leads is the other one they have access to create, but uh, everything else is read-only. And then essential license, which is the cheapest, that would be more so if you're um, developing more of a, a portal. Let's say you're developing a portal in SharePoint and you're going to surface some CRM data on a, on a web part. Um, if that's the only place or the only way that a user would access the CRM data is through that portal, you could get by with an essential license for that user and they, they wouldn't have access to log into CRM directly, but they could access data through a portal. And then uh, with the Office 365 ePlans, um, e if you want to integrate, basically fully integrate everything with Dynamic CRM, you, um, we do need to be on an E3 or an E4 plan. Um, the reason is, is we need a plan that has the full download, cl downloadable clients. So we need to in, in actually install Outlook, install Excel. Um, we can't use the web app versions of those products to integrate with CRM. And then if you want to integrate with SharePoint and, ex and Exchange, we do need some additional capabilities that are found in the enterprise um, SKUs in order to, to be able to manage kind of the send as permissions and the uh, um, authentication and things like that as we connect to the Exchange um, um, service. So 
So just kind of keep that in mind if you want to do if you're going to do a trial, make sure you trial it on E3 if you want to set up the full integration. Um, if you just want to, let's just say a customer already has Office that they paid for, but they're using Exchange Online and SharePoint Online, that would still work as well as long as they have a full copy of that Office, um, the Office deployment, so that they can install on their machine. So the next few slides are just kind of, I put them in the slide deck so you guys can have the slide deck afterwards. So we'll, we'll share that out with the recording. So these are a lot of things we already talked about in the demo. Um, but, you know, as we kind of maybe recap here, you know, with, with CRM and Office 365, you know, having rich document management capabilities, you know, integrating Outlook with email, so connecting up with Exchange. Um, we, we do offer hybrid scenarios too. So if you have customers that are on Exchange on-premise, you can you can still connect up with their exchange environment um, even though you're using CRM online. So we do support um, hybrid scenarios um, with that and with, with SharePoint as well. Um, you know, again, document management capabilities and then the unified messaging with the you know real-time IM and presence notifications. Um, the next few slides will just, I guess one, one item I didn't talk about was we do integrate with, with Word into the mail merge functionality. So you can mail merge into Word. Um, so if you like using mail merge, um, that is an option as well. But otherwise, every, everything else on these slides are things we kind of talked about with you know, exporting to Excel, um, you know, integrating with Exchange and email within the other client. But I just kind of put these slides in here so you guys had them for, for reference after the training or after the webinar here. Um, I do have a few additional links towards the end here, so for, for more information. Um, if you, if anything, just remember crm.dynamics.com. If you, if you hit that link, um, it'll redirect you to a page that you can start looking at some of the, the Dynamics functionality or the products, and you can actually click a little test drive, where you can actually, it's kind of an automated kind of click through, um, walk through, or click through of, of the CRM application, and then. It, during that test drive, you can click to sign up for a free trial if you want to trial CRM and kind of play with it and stuff like that. So just crm.dynamics.com will take you to that location. And, and we'll see if there's any additional questions that I missed here. Let me get back to my IM window. Yeah, we got uh, three of them in there uh, for you, Corey. Uh, one of them is in regards to uh, logging in on an Active Directory. Yep. Uh, when we use link uh, with on-prem AD credentials and CRM 2011 online with a live ID, will sync work? So for link, that should still work because um, we're not really necessarily authenticating you as long as you have the link client installed and you may need to add the CRM website to your trusted sites, um, then it should still be able to pull in the link presence information because um, we don't really, really authenticate the user for the link presence. We just kind of look on the local machine to see, do they have the link client installed? So if that isn't working for you, um, definitely we could look at that as a, a support case if, if that isn't working. But try try the trusted sites and see if that would uh, um, fix your issues. I know that's, that's done it for me a few times. That's in my demo environments. Um, um, sure. And then uh, we had another question. Uh, since additional storage is available for some of the other Office 365 solutions, uh, is there additional storage that can be purchased for CRM? So you can purchase additional CRM specific storage. You can't, like, say you pr you go out and purchase um, some, like, I don't know, say 10 gigs of SharePoint storage. You can't reallocate that to be used for CRM. Um, so there, there is a, a hard line there where we can't kind of share storage that way. Because um, even though they may be in the same data, data center, if they are in this separate databases, maybe not even on separate servers, depending on you know, where it got provisioned at. Um, so yeah, we don't have a way, at least at this time, to share storage between other Office products. OK. Well, um, I think uh, you're open for some, a few additional questions. Uh, yeah. We've got five minutes remaining, so we'll. <clears throat> and we do have a hard stop at the top of the hour, so. Yeah, yeah. Kind of just to kind of clarify too that last question on the we're using SharePoint as a document store, then wouldn't we be using the storage al storage allowance that is licensed? And so in that case, yes. Yeah, so when when you store a document um, in SharePoint, even though you're going through CRM to store it in SharePoint, it's not taking up any any data any um, size on the CRM side. That's all SharePoint storage. So in that aspect. 
it, yes, it's kind of just sharing some storage that way, but they are it's storing C, the, the file in the SharePoint database, and we're just accessing it through kind of like a, an iframe. So you would be using SharePoint storage for any documents. So uh, everybody's welcome to either uh, enter another questions in the chat window or if you uh, want to unmute yourself and ask a question at this time. Well, I'll take that silence as a, a, a good point to end here today then, Corey. Um, I can't thank you enough for taking the time today to do this session. It was full of information, and it was it was great to uh, enable our partners to add this to their sales uh, cycle as they're talking to their customers. Um, and uh, if uh, you have any questions uh, for Corey or myself, uh, I think most of you have my contact information. You're always welcome to reach out to me. I'll enter uh, my uh, contact email address again in the chat window, but uh, we're happy to help where we can. So uh, again, Corey, thank you for all of the information and your time today. Yep, no problem. Let's say well, one more question here. Do you know if you have to purchase a license for users that view on-premise data that has been exported from CRM on-premise and uploaded to SharePoint Online? Uh, let's see. So in that case, if it is CRM data that they're accessing, even if it is through SharePoint Online, they would still need some type of license. And this could go back down to either a basic license or even an essential license. Depending on the scenario, um, it definitely would still need some type of a license um, for that. For that. Well, I will be uh, staying on this bridge for a few more minutes. Uh, so if there are any outstanding questions, uh, we'll, uh, I'll try to relay them back to Corey and try to get answers for people. Uh, there's my contact information. Um, and uh, Corey, thanks again for uh, being my guinea.